What's up guys, in this video I want to show you how to prepare a mesh in your 3D software of choice. I'm using Blender and um, how to prepare it for exporting to a game engine, Substance Painter, um, Marmoset for baking, I don't care what it is. There are some steps you have to take. So uh, what a lot of people do is they make their model, you know, they'll do their usual uh, Boolean hard surface modeling and they'll have a mesh like this. And people will take this mesh and then just export it straight out of Blender without doing any um, of the techniques I'll show you in this video. And I want to show you why you can't just take this model and export it into Substance Painter, for example. So notice how when I brought this into Substance Painter, this entire mesh just kind of collapsed, looks awful. And the reason this is happening is because Substance Painter is automatically trying to triangulate this thing um, with its own algorithm and oftentimes automatic triangulations will cause overlaps in your geometry and uh, you're going to get basically collapsed geo like this which is no good. So the last thing you want to do is just export without triangulating. You want to make sure you triangulate beforehand in your 3D software. I'm going to show you how to do it. So it's a bit tricky. Uh, usually if you're doing subdivision surface modeling and you have everything mounted to quads you uh, usually won't have to employ this strategy because those quads will be automatically triangulated without issue. Now if you're doing Boolean modeling this come, becomes a bit tricky because your triangulations um, that are done automatically might not work. So as you can see here I don't have any triangulations done but if I press Control T I can add a triangulation and Blender does a pretty decent job at finding the best and most suitable connection points for your uh, geometry. Now, um, if you want to check for overlaps, so you know um, edges overlapping each other, uh, what we can do is go to this panel and turn on face orientation. And what we want to do is check for any um, red areas. Now, I don't have any red areas right here, and I'll show you why. Or I'm sorry, I don't have any blue areas here. Um, usually, if you turn that on, you'll have blue for good and red for bad. Let me show you how to turn off the blue. You're just going to go up here to Edit, Preferences, Themes, 3D Viewport, and then turn the Face Orientation Front Alpha Value down to zero, and that's how you do that. Anyways, what I want to do is check for any overlaps we might have, and it looks like I have one right here. Um, this is symmetrical. I'm not too sure why it's occurring there, but not here. Let me fix it. We'll just go in and hit it with a symmetry to avoid it. All right, cool. So both sides are good. So I'm going to press Control T again and let's make sure we don't have any other um, overlaps and it looks like we don't. This doesn't mean the triangulation is perfect. Oftentimes the triangulations around beveled corners give you a less than ideal um, automatic connection. So for example, let me turn off the bevel real quick. If I go in here, notice how this kind of bounces around and goes in like this into the corners. and it's okay it probably won't cause any issues but if you wanted to make the bevel bigger most likely what will happen is you'll start getting artifacts at some point it looks like this corner was fine but there might be some situations in which we end up getting some uh, bad artifacts maybe here for example let me press Control T to triangulate this notice how we have some very stretched triangulations going at a tangent direction in this case if I wanted to increase the bevel it'll probably start overlapping at some point. And this is the type of situation we want to avoid, especially if you have a bigger bevel, it might just uh, overlap right off the bat. So in this case, I'm gonna actually show you a few tricks to triangulate. If you wanna see like a very in-depth instruction on proper triangulation, uh, check out our new game asset course. That one goes into a lot of detail, but for like a you know five, 10 minute video, I can't explain everything, so. I'm going to show you like one of the main ways you want to triangulate. So you don't want to have triangulations running like this, it's just going to be a, a bad day. So generally you want to connect these at a more uh, perpendicular direction, much like we do in pretty much uh, any boolean. So in this case what I could do, there's a few different solutions, I could probably run a knife. I'll press the K key and then click, press C, and then if I just want to run another one I'll press the E key and do this a few times and this will kind of help Blender find a better vertex to connect to like that. Um, if we don't want to use three vertices we could probably get away with doing something like this where I take this edge and then subdivide it once and then just find like a central location and then I just kind of um, join these with the J key 
and I'll press Shift R to repeat. You can also use Mesh Machine's Star Connect feature if you type in uh, F3 and search for Star Connect. If you have Mesh Machine, you can do it this way as well. And this is kind of how you want to run your triangulations whenever you run into a situation that is really stretched. So that's the first method to triangulate in. Uh, the second method, let me show you another example. Actually, we'll just leave that one and we'll go back to this guy. Let me just hit it with a clean mesh so you can see. Um, ignore that, that probably just overdid it. But uh, say for example, I didn't want this connection to kind of go at like this steep into the bevels. What you can do instead, so you can come in here, press the J key to join straight down, and then perhaps we could just cut all the way across like that, or maybe just connect right there. And then on this one, we can connect right here. And notice how now we have a much better vertex for these bevel, uh, the, the vertices on the beveled area to connect to in a star formation. And it's uh, also orthogonal, which is exactly what we want. So that's another way you want to make sure your triangulations are going because if they're not going that way, oftentimes you might run into artifacts. Now, looks like um, this is okay. I, that clean mesh I clean mesh I ran was a bit too strong, so I'm just going to undo that. But yeah, that's probably how you want to run your uh, connections, your triangulations in corners like that. Now let's do another example up here. What about this one? Um, in this case, it works fine. Like The only time you need to worry about how the triangulation uh, looks is if you have artifacts. When you hit it with a triangulation and you start getting artifacts, that's when you need to worry. If you're not having any, technically you don't need to worry. I'm just a fan of having a clean triangulation, so that way if I look at the underlying geo, it still looks a bit more elegant. So technically this will work as long as we don't have any red areas indicating an overlap, which we actually do right here. So uh, in this case, if I wanted to stop Blender from triangulating and causing this artifact, what I could do is just come into this side and maybe run a connection here, a connection here, and same for this side. Oh jeez, let me do this again. Three and then four. Something like this will probably help fix it. And there we go. Now as you can see, that completely removed the uh, issue with the triangulation. That's a prime example of why you don't want to let um, you know substance or whatever you're using automatically do triangulations because then it's going to cause those artifacts and the, the geo just can't render like I showed you at the beginning of the video. So that's why you want to fix this in Blender and it's really easy to fix if you just do little tricks like that. So we have that one, that one looks good. How about these corners though? Not really a fan of how these look. We could make this look a bit more elegant. So what I'm going to do is press the J key and just connect up. This is really good for beveled corners like this that are symmetrical. All you have to do is join up the opposing edges with the J or opposing vertices with the J key and then you're going to have a uh, nice convenient vertex for these to connect to in a star formation. Now you can see this is a bit more elegant. So that's another trick for getting a good triangulation on bigger endgons like this and uh, a, a strategy I employ a lot. Now how about this right here? What can we do about this? Well mostly uh, on this object it's mostly quads so control T is going to be nice and easy. But it, uh, usually if you have a cylinder and you have an end gone capped on the cylinder, you'll get something like this. And the best way to actually make this a better triangulation instead of you know, having it bounce around in these edges, which at some point might you know, cause an overlap. In this case, it's all right. But what you want to do instead is select the top face of a cylinder with an end gone, E to extrude, right click to cancel, and then S0. And then we're going to have a point there in the middle. Now make sure you have auto merge turned on, otherwise you're going to have like uh, however many vertices one in, there's going to be like 32 vertices overlapped here, and you could just select everything with the A key, press M, and then merge by distance if you need to, but I just prefer to turn on the auto merge function up here. So that's how you can make a triangulation on your cylinders like that, and those are like the main strategies I employ when I'm triangulating my mesh. So you basically want to employ those and you want to check for artifacts and if you're getting artifacts find a place to run a knife cut so that way those artifacts don't occur and that is how you prepare your model for exporting 
in Blender or any 3D software really. Of course you're going to have to unwrap your model which you should have technically done before the triangulation so that way you can mark seams easier and whatnot select loops because once you triangulate you can't really select loops anymore unfortunately. But uh, yeah so that's really all you have to do to prepare for export and now if I were to export this and bring it into substance you're going to have something like this which shouldn't have any artifacts or uh, overlaps at all and if you do that means you miss something inside of Blender and you have to go back and fix it. So that's how you prepare your mesh for exporting. Same strategy for any other texturing software, same strategy for Marmoset Toolbag, same strategy if you're exporting directly to a game engine. This is how you want to do it so that way um, those tricky end gons won't give you any headaches when you're trying to export or texture your model. So that's it. Hope the video helped, and if it did, consider joining our Patreon. We have tons of cool stuff over there every single month. Uh, this month we make a mech leg, which is really cool. You might enjoy that modeling. So, till next time, I'll see you in the next video.